Hey, it's Tobin. I'm going to talk to you today about responsive web design. And if you're at all into web design, you've heard that phrase before. Responsive web design is just web design that responds to the user's behavior and environment based on things like screen size, platform, uh, portrait versus landscape, things of that nature. The idea is, is you code a site once and you use things like CSS media queries to make it so that site runs well on anything, whether it's a you know, 1080p screen with a browser open full screen or a smartphone. So that's responsive web design. And I was inspired to, to take a look at responsive web design some more from a podcast by Chris Coyers at CSS Tricks. And if you are have any interest, I'm running a KDE desktop. Don't go over there. Uh, if you have any interest at all in in web design, you should really check out Chris's podcast, CSS Tricks. He's he's just a really br brilliant brilliant guy. I owe him many beers. He made a podcast on responsive web design. It kind of went over things at a at a high level. And his site does just amazing things. And you see as you start moving the browser inward, sidebars move, the little frog will change color, sidebar will disappear, the top navigation up here will, will change orientation. It, ju it just dances when it moves. It, it's, it's really cool. Uh, so I saw that. I was doing a little bit of responsive design and some of the stuff I was doing, but I looked at what he did in his podcast and change some of the stuff I was doing. I thought I'd go over a couple of quick code samples from a, from a pair of my sites just to see how responsive design works. Now a couple things about responsive design. This is where you'll really get rewarded if you've made your site the right way. If you are using tables for layout you're going to be royally screwed if you try to do responsive design. If you have CSS all stuck in your HTML file. You're going to get royally screwed if you try responsive web design. But if you made your page the right way, it'll be really, really easy. A yeah. couple things you'll need to do for responsive site design, and the first has to do with this meta tag right here. Meta tag is viewport. You want to set this max scale, you don't have to set, but device width equals device width and initial scale one is the most important thing and I'll put a link to some of these sites in the show notes this is a really great page on on Mozilla developer site and a pixel is not always a pixel in other words the DPI of a pixel on a 1080p monitor versus a droid is very different. So a droid might say I'm 800 pixels wide, but the DPI is so much smaller. If you make your site 800 pixels wide for that droid, you won't be able to read anything. It'll be too tiny. So this width equals device width essentially kind of zooms it in 150 percent. It's basically saying take the pixels and measure them like you would if it wasn't such a high DPI and that will if you don't have that you will you'll die a slow agonizing death trying to do responsive web design so in your HTML page you'll just stick that in the head section initial scale equals one just means don't start out zoomed in or zoomed out or something nuts so you need that after that we're talking CSS and we're going to take a look at at my blog first and I redesigned it recently uh, and it's it's a really a different kind of design by different I uh, you know, probably mean bad but uh, you know the uh, the the titles down at the bottom instead of the top so the content is the first thing yeah anyway uh, I really like it no one else probably does but that's that's okay now, if we move this browser inward, we're going to start to run into some problems. This, uh, let's go back a little bit. Okay, this search box and these newer and older post links are going to run into each other, causing ugly. 
And this footer is tied to the bottom of the page. It's not a free floating footer. It's, it's not in the flow. So as this text gets crunched, it's going to push that whole footer upward and it's going to start to eat into our content. And that kind of sucks too. So what we're going to do is we're going to say in our CSS file, when the media is screen and the max width is 480 pixels, in other words, it's 480 pixels or smaller. And remember we're doing with that uh, device width, we're getting kind of real pixels even on, on smartphones. We're going to get rid of that footer paragraph so it doesn't jump up too high and change the, the content padding on the bottom for a smaller footer. We're going to take that search box and clear the float and drop it below the previous and next post. And that's about it. So we'll see as we drag that sucker around. We're going to hit about 480 pixels. You see the footer starting to creep up toward that content. Danger zone. Get out 480 pixels. Immediately the search box dropped below. So these two things and the search box won't run into each other anymore. That paragraph is gone. So it's going to push the footer lower so it's not going to go up and eat our content. And you'll notice before the footer had a wider margin on the page. When we get below 480 pixels, we're going to make that margin much smaller so it's squeezing more text all the way down to our minimum width, which I think was like 320 pixels, I said it. That's as small as you'll get. That way this site looks and works fine on an Android or an iPhone, it looks and works fine on a bigger device. Now that was very simple, responsive design. It's a little more complicated on the GeoPortal template. Now here, the problems we're gonna run into this title and the search bar are going to run into each other, causing suck. And on this, eventually you're going to get so small because there's a sidebar here that the map will become unusable. So what we're going to do, at about 800 pixels, we're just going to get rid of that header logo. Maybe people should know where they are. And, uh, you, I mean, you could do cooler things like, like a, a smaller logo and throw it somewhere else, but... When we get below 640 pixels, we're going to rearrange the whole thing. We're going to put the map on top, search bar below it, and the tabs below it. And we're going to get rid of the footer. And we're going to make the links for jQuery UI for like the accordion and the tab and, and so forth much, much bigger. So your fat little fingers can push them, push them on your iPhone or your Android. So. Okay, we're cruising lower, we're cruising lower. Look, the, uh, the, the, the logo is about to run in the search bar. Boop, we just get rid of it. Now I see our map is getting unusually small. See what it did there? It rearranged the whole page to fit on a smaller device, all the way down to, you know, a minimum width, which I think was 320 pixels again. You see, we went from a desktop browser kind of interface to a phone interface, and it was just, you know, a dozen lines of CSS or so to do that. We didn't have to make a whole separate site or anything like that. Now, that little whiz-bang thing where it kind of animates and jumps around, that is just, well, that's totally unnecessary, but it is, let's see... What I did up in CSS is set the header aside and map container to have a transition, uh, which means it'll work on anything except for, you know, Internet Explorer. I don't know if it'll work on 9 or not. I haven't tried it. But if not, all it does is it just moves. It doesn't transition. We say ease in and out for 600 milliseconds, and that's why when it moves, it kind of animates. Now, that's a useless thing, and if you're on a phone, you're not going to see that anyway. It's just going to come up where it's supposed to come up. But it's kind of cool. It's like one line of code, so. Yeah. And that's it. That's all I want to tell you about responsive design. Just a quick one this week. There is a whole lot you can do with it. You can have the design change, whether it's based on whether the orientation is portrait or landscape. You could have it do something different every 10 pixels if you want. 
There's a lot you can do with it. Uh, just one other, one or two other things. You notice that's a YouTube video. We're going to shrink that too because if you shrink everything else but your content stays really big, I mean, you haven't done a whole lot because you're still getting a horizontal scroll bar and horizontal scroll bars just yell rookie, rookie, rookie. The other thing I'll show you, and that's a video, that's respond.js. You have to do a little JavaScript for that, and I'll put a link to that in the show notes. You can also, with images, say this one, shrink the images too. And that you can do in CSS. And I'll put the CSS I'm using for WordPress for that. Um, just to see what it is. It's pretty straightforward. That's it. That's responsive web design. I uh, hope you enjoy it, and I'll see you next month.